Okay, team, let's do a nice juicy decoding question. You notice that this is a nice long one. It's got a lot of linguistic complexity. It's very wordy and uh, it's awesome. <laughs> this is from the Texas Science of Teaching Reading Exam, the 293. And this is probably gonna take you uh, two to read, but I want you to do it and I want everyone to do it. And I want you to start here and I want you to go to the end, okay? And then we'll talk about it, okay? Take two minutes now, pause me, pause, and uh, we'll talk about it when you're done, okay? Go. This is such a long question. It's hard to imagine that they would give you a hundred of these on your test, right? That's just, I mean, and expect you to answer it in two minutes. But what we're going to do right now is we're just going to break it up. Usually they have like a beginning and middle and end. These ones have a little bit more, but, um, but I'm going to break this up into part one, uh, the middle section, and then the end section with the question. Okay. So this is actually the portion that has the question. Sometimes it's better to find the question when you get the, and, and read this first, find that question and, and read that because otherwise, you know, you're going on and on and reading before you get the question. So let's just try that. Okay. It says here, just, we'll get to that in a moment, but I'm just going to skip to this. This scenario best demonstrates the teacher's awareness of which of the following concepts related to students' development of beginner reading skills. So let me circle this beginner reading skills. Okay. All right. So we're going to do one of those beginner reading skills. Okay. Now, now we have a couple that we've already done already. We have, you know, sound stuff. We have print stuff. Uh, and we have uh, letter sound or AKA phonics, right? So those are three beginner reading skills that we've already reviewed. Yes. And, and if I look closely here, I don't even have to read the options. Uh, I see uh, phonics is an option. I see uh, concepts of print is an option, right? Um, I'm seeing uh, motivation of some type to read and write. That's something going on there. I not necessarily the answer here, but you know, it's, it's going on. Then we have, uh, uh, we have uh, th these words here, accurate, automatic, decoding, influent writing. So fluent, it's not just fluent reading, it's fluent writing, the most advanced one. There's that going on there too. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so uh, we got uh, some of these are, 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 are not beginner skills, but, but let's go to the question now. So we're going to be looking at, you know, there's the scenario and, and how's this, what, what scenario is being, uh, what skill, beginner reading skills being developed in the scenario? So I'll, I'll read it over. It says, a kindergarten teacher, right, reads a decodable text about cats with a small group of students and then incorporates the text of the, uh, incorporates the content of the text in an interactive writing lesson. Okay, so the kindergarten teacher is reading like a Bob book. To a small group of students, and then they incorporate the content, I guess the characters in the text, into an interactive writing activity, like write about the characters, maybe, I don't know. First, the teacher has the students orally generate several sentences that relate to the actions of the cat in the story. Okay, I like this, orally, orally come up with those sentences. Uh, the teacher then says, so first we got first, then we got then, right? The teacher then says, those are great sentences. Help me write them on the chart paper. Uh, for the decodable words in the sentence, the teacher pauses to prompt the students to listen to the sounds in the words and use their knowledge of letter sound correspondence they practice in the decodable text to identify which letters the teacher should write next. Okay, so here we have it. Decodable text is obviously working with decoding. And that involves letter sound correspondence. Yes, and we call that decoding. That's what they're working on. But this activity has them generate those words like cat 
and has them take the sounds that they hear in the words and match it up to how to spell the word, right? And that's called encoding. So this is a, 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 a combo, a decoding activity, the reading of the decodable text, and then an encoding activity where they, they start to generate and, and start to spell some of those words that they put in their sentences, right? So they are practicing both decoding and encoding in this activity, yes? You got that? Huh. Well, I'm just going to circle uh, another way of, of getting to that because that was a lot. Decodable text, um, letter sound correspondence, decodable words, right? Do you see that this is involving decoding? And it's also involving taking things in oral language that the teacher says and uh and 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 matching the sounds to what they know in letter sounds it's also encoding too but all these things right uh decodable texts are leading you all these things right are leading you to that yes and i'm not even going to try and color code it we're just going to try and try an arrow <laughs> to letter sound correspondence or sound letter correspondence so the answer here is d what a great question, right? What a wordy question. Now, let's say you just saw that it had to do with decoding. Then isn't it kind of fair to say if this has to do with decoding, that it's it's not really a concept of print thing, you know what I mean? And, you know, it does kind of sound fun, but I don't know if it's motivation. If there's a motivation element here. I mean, it does sound fun, but I don't know if that, I don't know. I don't know about that. Right. And then, um, and then in terms of these words here, accurate, automatic decoding. So that's rapid word recognition or automaticity. That's more of a fluency thing for fluent reading, but we're doing fluent writing and coding that's even more advanced, right? So I think like fluent reading would be very advanced, but fluent writing, oh, way too advanced for this age group, right? You agree with me? All right, the answer here is D. It's, it's a nice problem. It's way too wordy, but we use those wordy words to get better at this stuff. So if you wanna check this test out, you can check it out here, go to this test. Uh, I think it's, uh, I don't think it's 1010. I'm, I'm sure that the question number is 10, number 10. You should just read 10 there. And the answer is D. And there's a great write-up on why it's D and why the others are wrong, okay? So check it out. And keep going, okay? All right, see you soon. Bye-bye.